Hey guys, it's Margie, the bootleg knitter. How are you? So I'm hanging out here and yes, I'm hanging out on my bed um, because I had to plug my phone in to my charger because I spent half the morning talking to my granddaughter. She's four. And so we play on the phone together. It's really cute. So she killed my battery. So I'm plugged in and I don't have a long enough area where I can plug in out in the living room and then uh, record. Sorry, as I fix my hair. So, like, my hat isn't it cute. So, this is my pattern. I call it the binary pattern because it's crochet and knit two different stitches. And this is my, this is not hand dyed. This is just an acrylic that I found at Michael's. And I love it. It's the, you know, the hunting orange color. And I might give it to my son because he's starting hunting season and it is getting a little chilly. But what I want to talk about now is I want to talk a little bit about some weaving. So I'm working here on my rigid heddle loom. I'm going to turn it over so you can see. So here's my rigid heddle loom. And what I love, this is my Cricut loom. And what I love about it is it's nice and small. I can sit in my chair. As you can see, I could do it in my bed. And I am joined today by Annie, who's over there. You can't see her head. And Casey. So they're chilling out with me today as I work on this. And what I wanted to talk about was this is called a herringbone pattern. And again, it's just simple acrylic yarn, but what makes this so lovely is that I have used textured yarn and one non-textured yarn. So you can see the bumps in this one. These are both, I think one is Lion Brand. I think this one's Lion Brand. And I don't remember what this one is. Sorry, yarn companies. I'm not really good about reading my labels. I just get what I like and I know what it is. And then I usually peel the label off and throw it away. But with this textured white and with the black, what it does is it actually makes the white pop a little more and it makes it look like there's little beads. Isn't that cool? So it looks like beadwork instead of woven fabric. So again, this is a herringbone pattern. So I do two black. It's actually, when you're warping, it's one black, but then it becomes two because one goes through the slat and one goes through the hole. So two black, two white, two black, two white, two black, two white, and so on. And then the same thing when you do your weft. Two black, two white, two black, two white, and so on. And that gives you your herringbone pattern. So it's a very easy pattern to do. So here's my black. Here's my white, and you could definitely see the texture on this. It's so bumpy. It was a really loose twist, so I did put it through my spinning wheel, and I made the twist a little tighter, so that way my warp did not fry. Lovely, right? So I just want to turn around nice and slow, nice and slow. So yeah, so this weekend I had my fleece to shawl competition in Bloomsburg, Pennsylvania, at the Bloomsburg Fair. It was awesome. We had such a great time. I was the mad flicker. I flicked and flicked and flicked and I still have, see the little dots. That's where the flicker bit me because I was flicking so fast. I got a couple on this finger also, but not as bad. Not as bad as last time. Last time, um, my hand was like totally swollen. I had marks all over my hand. I had a big, huge lump right here for where I just totally stabbed it and it just got big and yeah, so this time I didn't um, I didn't puncture myself too badly. I usually wear gloves, but with this fleece, it was a little finer. And I had a hard time with my gloves feel, grabbing and feeling the ends of the locks. So some of you have no idea what I'm talking about, and that's okay. Um, so imagine like you're weeding the garden, and there's big grasses, and there's little tiny fine grasses. So sometimes when you're wearing gloves, you can't feel those little tiny fine grasses. So that's kind of how I felt with this fleece. I had to take my glove off. So it was easier for me to grab and hold the fleece without a glove. So then I had to be extra careful when I was flicking, which means you brush it, get all the knots out of it um, with a brush, but it has really sharp little tines on it. And um, occasionally you get yourself, <laughs> but I was extra careful this time knowing I didn't have gloves on. So I think that's why I actually did not get myself as bad. Last time I had gloves on, so I just went crazy and I got myself pretty bad. So this time without the gloves, I actually ended up doing better than with the gloves. So if you ever are in this area of Pennsylvania, area of Bloomsburg, 
and it's the, um, that last week in September, it is a phenomenal fair. It's huge. I might actually be heading back up that way Saturday to, cause I didn't really have time to check out a lot of the fair cause we were doing a fleece to shawl competition. So what is fleece to shawl or sheep to shawl? Fleece to shawl is when you get a raw fleece from a sheep. So it has not been washed. It has not been um, brushed or anything. It's just a raw fleece and you put it in front of you. You have three people who spin on spinning wheels, one person who is the flicker, which was me, and then you have your weaver. So you have two and a half hours to go from that fleece where I would grab it and flick as fast as I can and give it to my spinners. They would then spin it and then it would go to the weaver on a bobbin who would then weave. Now, when you weave, let me turn around again, sorry, this is called the warp. So for the competition, this is allowed to be done ahead of time because this takes hours and hours and hours. I mean, you're weaving, um, you're weaving about 78 inches, which it's long. So, and you got to put it through all the little holes and that's on a big loom, not a simple loom like this. So this warp is done ahead of time. So what we're doing in the competition is we're making the yarn to do the weft. That's this part back here that goes to horizontal. Okay. So you have two and a half hours to do so. So we actually went over on time, whatever. <laughs> we still had an awesome time. It's a new, newer team. We only had one true practice with all the team members there. And, um, you know, sometimes you just don't go as fast for some reason or another. I said, I was a mad flicker. I was flicking like crazy. It was great. And everybody was just so nice. So we still ended up placing. Um, we, Even though we didn't finish on time, we placed lower, of course. Um, we were told if we had finished on time, we would have gotten first because they loved everything about us, which is really nice to hear. Our, our shawl was beautiful. You can actually see it on my Instagram page, the bootleg knitter, because it's absolutely beautiful. And we still have the practice shawl is for sale. It is all hand spun. So that's also still for sale. So if you're interested, you can, you know, contact me through Instagram. Also through Facebook, The Bootleg Knitter. And I guess that's it. Oh my goodness, here comes my other little baby, Oni. No, he's down there. Okay, he doesn't want to come up. He's got a bone in his mouth. He's just checking out where I'm at. So today's kind of a lazy day. I'm, um, said working on this, uh, scarf for my daughter. And, um... Yeah, my allergies are killing me. You probably hear my voice. My eyes hurt. My nose is running. Fall allergies are just so much fun. So I might actually um, just really chill out today, work on some of this kind of stuff, and hang out. So I hope you have a nice day in your neck of the woods. And let's say a prayer, please, for everyone down in Florida. I have some friends that are, like, right in the path of the hurricane. Um, so I hope that they're safe. I hope everybody stays safe. And, you know, those that have to evacuate they should really heed the advice and get out i know it's hard but it's definitely better safe than sorry okay so i hope you'll have a nice day